A serious uh, president has extended his rule for another seven years. Bashar al-Assad won Wednesday's election with 95% of the vote, despite criticism from Western nations and the Syrian opposition, who said that the polls were a farce and unfair. Zaria al Dersi reports from Damascus. Bashar al-Assad won a fourth seven-year term in the Syrian presidential election, which was held on Wednesday, May 26. The head of Syrian parliament declared the results after counting votes from ballot boxes that came from abroad in different embassies, as well as ballots inside Syria. President Assad won against two other candidates, Mahmoud Mirai, Secretary General of Democratic National Action Authority, Abdullah Abdullah, former minister and former member of parliament. The Syrian people expressed their will at polling stations around the country. I'm honored to declare the victory of Bashar al-Assad with 95% of the 14 million votes cast. Candidate Mahmoud Merhi gained 3% and Abdullah Abdullah 2%. These elections are the first to be held since the liberation of over 60% of the country, recapturing main cities and securing the capital, with most of the provinces able to vote despite the blockade and sanctions. The significance of these elections is that they were held after liberating wide parts of Syria. While in the 2014 vote, many areas were under rebel control. It is believed that the election would help the political situation, which also means future economic improvement. Syrians took to the streets celebrating President Assad's win and hoping that after the election, they would live with better security and an improved economy. Syrians have once again voiced their full support for Bashar al-Assad. Syria proved it has overcome the consequences of the decade-long unrest and now it's time to rebuild the country. Zahra Derzi, CGTN, Damascus, Syria. Now, professor Wang Jin is joining us from Xi'an. He is an associate professor at China's Northwest University, specializing in Middle Eastern studies. Wang Jin, welcome to Global Watch. Well, Syria has been war torn for 10 years already. And so, given the fact that Assad, Al Assad is not controlling the whole of the country, he only controls parts of the country, what are the challenges facing him? Uh, yes, Dong Ying, that you are right. After the elections, his difficulty just emerged because the election itself is not uh, the difficulty, but it, although it is very difficult, but not the biggest difficulty for the country, because uh, because after the years of the war-torn uh, country, that they have to uh, face the process of reconstruction. But I think the re election itself is very meaningful because it suggests that uh, the country has the confidence to unify people, to to try to bridge the gaps and and uh, the divisions uh, during the past uh, years of conflict. And it is a very good beginning to uh, march forward for the country. So itself, the election itself is very meaningful. But meanwhile, we have to say, as we stress, there are a lot of difficulties ahead. For example, they have to fit. I think Syria has to uh, try to settle the political divisions, mm -hmm. especially as we see there were some uh, political disagreements from the political opposition groups mm -hmm. inside and also outside Syria. And also, the uh, the Syrian government has to find ways to uh, uh, to start the uh, to economic reconstruction process, especially uh, due to the fact that the Syrian government lack of uh, enough money and funds mm -hmm. and also assistance uh, internationally. And meanwhile, the Syrian government also has to find ways to uh, to bridge the divisions uh, between Syria government as well as some of the regional countries, for example, the Saudi Arabia and, and the, uh, the Emirates and also Egypt and other regional Arab countries. So this, so they, this needs all of them needs time and need time uh, we need efforts and patience mm -hmm. to find a way out together so there were a lot of difficulties ahead of uh, syria's president bashar assad and also a lot of difficulties will be ahead mm -hmm. after this election so the, the election is meaningful but it's just the beginning Tony. it's not very easy to solve the uh, 
to, to uh, solve the differences between Assad and the opposition, isn't it? For instance, uh, well, the Western countries should have a big say into all this. Uh, the election is slammed as unfair and fraudulent by the United States and European countries, as well as the exiled opposition, of course. Uh, so what all that tell us about uh, the way out, indeed? I think the only way out is to... Uh, two dimensions from the, 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 the side perspective of Syria government. I think Syria government also has to uh, actively, more actively to engage uh, into the delegations, uh, uh, to, to the negotiations and also dialogues with the Syrian opposition parties as well as to try to improve ties with other regional countries who may have the, the have the the, the uh, or once had the very close ties with some of the opposition groups that uh, are or war against the Syrian government. Uh, on the other hand, I mean, uh, especially from the perspective of the United States and also the some of European countries, I think they have to face the reality because the Syrian government is still there and the Syrian government actually represents the, the majority willingness of the Syrian population. So if the, the, the some of the Western countries hope really hope to help the Syrian people. Uh, they, I think they need to uh, reapproach the Syria government and try to find ways together, hand by hand with Syria government, uh, to help the Syrian people to, to offer the Syrian uh, local residents rather than impose sanctions, rather than to try to prevent the developments of the Syrian people's daily life. So I think this is the only way out. Maybe the Western countries, they have more responsibilities. Tony. Well, let's hope uh, that those efforts can be done. All right, thank you very much, Professor Wang Jin from China's Northwest University.